Hello again everyone, it is Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you three easy, no-bake vegan desserts. Now, I did make some of these desserts with Valentine's Day in mind, but honestly, I like desserts all year round and sometimes you just can't be bothered to make a fancier dessert. So, one of these desserts is a little bit fancier, but honestly, all of them are really easy and you don't need an oven or a stove in order to make any of them. And they're all made with pretty healthy vegan ingredients too. And they all involve chocolate just because, I mean, who doesn't like chocolate? I, I personally love chocolate and I think they're great in all of them. But one of them does have a chocolate free option if you don't like chocolate. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling and let's get on to the recipes. First up, we're going to be making some salted caramels or healthy salted caramel treats. This recipe is very easy, requires very minimal ingredients, and it's a nice dessert, but it's also just a great snack to have. So the base of our salted caramels are going to be medjool dates because they have a nice caramelly flavor. I'd recommend using soft dates. Mine are really, really soft, but if you have harder ones, you can soak them in hot water for a few minutes. And then to give our caramel that caramelly flavor, we're going to add some nut butter. I personally like to use tahini because I think this is the most realistic in terms of a salted caramelly flavor after it combines with the dates, but you could also use peanut butter or almond butter as well. Then we're going to add in some vanilla extract, which also helps to make things sweeter and taste more like candy, as well as some maca powder. This is optional, but it does give more depth of flavor and make it taste more like a salted caramel. Notice the theme here. Finally, we've gotta add some salt if we want our caramel to be salted. And then we're just going to process everything together in a food processor. I think you could also do this in a blender if you had a high speed blender with a tamper. And as you can see, it forms a really thick and even dough that has the consistency of caramel. So the dough is a little soft right now and it might stick to your fingers just a little bit, but this is easily remediated. We're just going to remove it from the food processor, plop it into a bowl, and then put this in the fridge for about 10 or so minutes to allow it to harden. After the dough is hardened, you're going to place it onto a sheet of wax paper and then cover it with another sheet of wax paper and use a rolling pin or a round heavy object to roll it out until it's your desired thickness. I wanted mine probably about like half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick and here I'm just shaping it with my hands so then once I cut it, the caramel pieces will be pretty evenly uh, shaped. So then we're just going to cut it in half, cut it in half again, cut those halves in half. So there you have what, eight, eight something lines? Yeah, eight lines. And then cut these pieces into smaller pieces so you have bite-sized candy sized treats. Again, as you can see, the dough has kind of come to room temperature, so it's a little bit more sticky. So we're just going to sprinkle it with some coarse sea salt. I'm using the Meldon flakes, they're nice and fancy, but uh, you can use regular sea salt, chunky sea salt as well. But you're gonna pop that back in the fridge for about 10 minutes or so, and then you can sort of tear off the individual caramel pieces and they will be ready to serve. So I wanted to keep these very authentic looking and I just cut little squares of wax paper and wrapped my caramels up like so. And they look like cute little candies which are perfect for parties or treats or appetizers or anything like that. So you can do it like this, but I recommend uh, melting some chocolate and then dipping the salted caramel piece in the chocolate. I like to use forks to keep things nice and neat. You're just going to swirl it around until it's evenly coated and then take it out and place it onto a sheet of parchment paper and let the chocolate completely harden. You can pop it back in the fridge if you want to speed up this process. But if you do decide to coat them, I would suggest topping them with the salt afterwards so then that way you see it and it's nice and visual and chunky. So you're just going to repeat this if you decide to do it this way with however many pieces of salted caramel you'd like. I like them both ways, but honestly, I'm addicted to chocolate, so I thought it was just a tiny bit more delicious after it was dipped in chocolate. But that is really it for this recipe. It's very simple, made from healthy ingredients, and you could even take these to the next level, maybe put them inside of brownies or in cookies, but it's a very easy and light dessert or afternoon snack, depending on what you wanna go for. Next up, I'm going to show you how to make some three ingredient peanut butter chocolate cookies because I've been obsessed with peanut butter and chocolate recently and I wanted to make some cookies. So to start out, we're going to melt some chocolate. For the first video, I just melted it in my microwave, which I have instructions um, in the blog post, but now I'm just going to show you how to use a double boiler. Basically, you just put a glass bowl or a metal bowl into a pot with water on the bottom, and as the water heats up, it's going to melt the chocolate chips, and you're just going to keep stirring it until 
about 80 to 90 percent of the chocolate is melted and then from there you can remove this from the heat or just turn the pot off and melt it until everything is melted this is the more proper way to melt chocolate and it ensures that it's more evenly melted and that none of it's going to burn sometimes the microwave can be a little tricky but either way once your chocolate's melted you're going to add in some peanut butter i am using crunchy peanut butter because i like the little extra bite that the cookies had but if you don't like crunchy peanut butter or you just have smooth peanut butter that works too it also works with another nut butter but these are peanut butter cookies we're also going to add in some vanilla extract and some salt and then we're going to quickly stir all this together and the chocolate is going to start to thicken um, immediately as soon as you add the other ingredients so you do want to move pretty quickly here and once everything is evenly incorporated you're going to add in some rolled oats and then just fold them into the chocolate batter and keep on stirring until all of the oats are evenly coated and that is pretty much it for these cookies they are very easy to assemble and as you can see the dough is still a little bit wet because the chocolate hasn't completely solidified yet so then now we're going to scoop this into cookie molds I used a cookie scoop but you could also use about uh, three to four tablespoons per cookie and just flatten it out a little bit with your hand and you're good to go and then I just placed mine on a lined baking sheet um, to let the cookies cool and harden completely but you could totally just put them on a plate because there are no baked cookies they are done at this point you just want them to harden a little bit before you bite into them but that is it and these will last for about a week or so at room temperature they're a perfect afternoon pick-me-up or dessert I like to have them with a glass of almond milk and they're really satisfying and delicious and I love the texture of the rolled oats in them too but that is it for our cookies and now last but not least we're going to be making a no bake chocolate raspberry tart so this tart is a little bit more complicated than the other recipes but it's still really really simple to start out we're going to be making a three ingredient pie crust by adding some raw almonds to a blender or a food processor and processing that until a fine meal forms then we're just going to add in some cacao powder and again we're going to be using medjool dates here because they are nice and sticky uh, you're also going to add in a tiny pinch of salt I forgot to show that in the video but uh, I would recommend and then again you're just going to blend everything together and then we're going to slowly pour in one to two tablespoons of water and as you can see this allows the dough to get a little bit more sticky and stick together and this is about the consistency that we're looking for so that is it for our no bake crust you're just going to place it into a pie or tart tin I did slightly grease my tart tin with some nonstick cooking spray just because I wanted to be able to pop it out um, but that is not essential if you just want to serve it directly out of the tin. Then we're going to pop this in the fridge while we make our really really easy filling. So again we're going to be using chocolate guys you notice the theme here I mean can you really go wrong with chocolate? I'm using some vegan chocolate chips but you could really use any sweetened chocolate that you'd like. There are some that are just sweetened with coconut sugar instead of cane sugar if that's something that's important to you. Either way, you're just gonna melt your chocolate till it's nice and silky. I just used the microwave this time because uh, I couldn't be bothered to use the double boiler. But so our, for our filling, you don't even really need to wash out the blender. We're just going to add some silken tofu and some almond butter to the blender. I'm using almond butter because it complemented the almonds in the crust, but you could use another nut butter if you wanted to. We're also going to add in some vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. And then first we're going to blend all of this together in our blender until it is pretty nice and smooth. Just to make sure the tofu is nice and broken up. And then at this point, you're going to pour your melted chocolate into the blender as well. And then that is pretty much our filling. You may have to use the tamper or a spatula to make sure everything gets nice and thoroughly blended in the blender. Um, the mixture is going to be thick, but you want it to be thick because otherwise it won't harden as much. Uh, but once everything is nice and delicious and all mixed together you're just going to add it to your pie tin and spread it around and you want the top to be relatively smooth especially if you're topping it with berries but you could go a little fancy with a swirl but once you've reached your desired level of smoothness you're just going to pop this in the fridge for a few minutes and this allows the chocolate to set and harden so it is more easily sliceable and now we're just going to top it so at the bare bones it's just a raspberry chocolate tart so if you just want to top it with fresh raspberries that's totally fine I just wanted to get a little bit more fancy so I topped it with some slivered almonds and a sprinkle of cacao nibs uh, just to bring things to the next level and to make my photos look prettier honestly for the blog post but that is it once you're ready to serve you can pop it out of the tart tin if that's the route that you decided to go cut yourself a nice thick piece and serve it I personally do like to serve this a little bit cold uh, you do want to keep it in the fridge but look how soft and creamy and decadent and delicious this pie is oh my gosh guys this was so so, so good, you should totally make it. 
And there you have it friends, let me know in the comments below which one of these recipes you like the most and which one you're most likely to make. And if you have any other favorite no bake vegan recipes or you want me to veganize a recipe, please let me know in the comments below too. I love hearing your suggestions. Honestly, all these recipes are really good and the salted caramel bites and the peanut butter cookies are really, really easy to make and require super minimal ingredients. So I think that they'd be a perfect snack for even meal prep or the work week or any time of year really. And and if you have kids, they'd also be really easy and fun to make with kids too if they wanna have fun in the kitchen. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, you can hit that little button down there. I post one to two new recipe videos every single week revolving around yummy vegan goodness and simple and delicious recipes. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, you can come and join the fam. I would say cool kids, but yeah, you know, we're cool. We can accept that. Anyways, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, whatever time of day it is for you, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.